بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أما بعد هابت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله هابت في الله a question was asked about the concept of commanding the good and forbidding the evil and we've spoken about this many times but it's very important for us to know and understand as the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith which is so you know it's la shak it falls under juwam al kalam that the Prophet ﷺ gave us this hadith which has immense import and immense meaning and in fact the words are uh, few but it is so subhanallah he gives us the the shurut <laughs> the, the the main shart the main conditions for being able to perform those that actual the, that act of ibadah which is commanding good is an act of worship and forbidding evil is an act of worship so there are conditions for worship so the prophet sallallahu said in the hadith of abi sa'id al-khudri radiyallahu ta'ala qal samatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam yaqul Man ra'a minkum munkarin Fali yaghayruhu bi yad Fa in lam yastati' Fa bi lisanihi Fa in lam yastati' Fa bi qalbihi Wa thalika adafu liman Ruwahu muslim The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said Man ra'a minkum munkarin Whoever sees a munkar A wicked sin Then change it with his His hand then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and if, and if you're unable to do so, then change it with your tongue, meaning you speak out against it. And if you're unable to do that, change it with your heart. And that is the weakest form of iman, meaning that all of those things are maratabal iman. They're all levels of iman, they're all included iman, and that is a rudd. A refutation of those people who say Iman doesn't fluctuate or Iman doesn't have different levels. All of the kind of murjia batil that the people have. Wallahu mustaan. So, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here, let us know that there's different levels of commanding the good and the forbidden the evil. And he let us know that shart, as I was mentioning in the beginning, that there's a condition. And that is istata'a. That's the qudra. That means you have the ability to change the good and the evil. For example, there's so many countless examples. For example, one of the things that uh, the, the ulama mentioned, and of course there's mu'allifat on this, this topic. There are books on this topic. But one of the things, for example, is you know that physical ability doesn't mean literally just only mashing on somebody, you know, with very with great strength and you know grabbing it. You see a munkar in the souk, you see somebody, a Muslim, drinking alcohol, and you just grab it from them and smash it on the ground, or you just bop them upside the head. La abidin. There's also other conditions that you need to, uh, things that are in place in the shara. Looking at the masali wa mafasid, that is big. That's a big part of this command in the good and the forbidden and the evil. Looking at the harms and the benefits. So if you go to a Muslim, Muslim fasic sinner, and he's drinking alcohol, and you just go up, and you smash his body, you literally take it out of his hand. Maybe this guy is a tough guy, he beats your head in. Maybe he's not a tough guy, and whatever, you have that strength, but you get hurt, or you hurt him and he leaves Islam. Or there's others around him and they cause harm to you. Or he goes to the police, presses charge against you for doing this in, a, in even Muslim countries that you drink alcohol, that <laughs> unfortunately, especially the ones that sell it openly and stuff, then there's, you, you don't have that right. That is, the, that is the job of the hukam, of the government. So the point being here, the commanding the good and the forbidden the evil, that is the right of the hukam there, in that changing it physically. And many of the scholars detail that in general you find that, unless it is something where you really do have authority. For example, in your household, your wife is doing something muharram. You say, no, you can't leave my house without wearing hijab. No, you can't go out there with perfume and makeup in the streets. No. Okay? Or your daughters, or your sons, or whatever the case may be. No, you can't look at pornography. No, you can't do this. You know, this music, no, this is not happening in my house. 
this is something you have the ability to do physically. So you get rid of the stereo, you get rid of the whatever. And I give you a real example of what happened when I was uh, in Aden a million years ago. And I remember with the Shabab that we were, uh, that one of the fitna that was happening there in Aden, the Shabab, you know, not all of them, uh, some of them were Tulab al-Ilm, and some of them, they, they just love Ilm, they love the Ulama, and they you know, used to go, you know, uh, Majalis al-Ilm, they used to go to the circles of Ilm, and they love the Ulama, they love Sheikh Muqbil, and they love all the Tulab Sheikh Muqbil, and, and, and so forth, and, and Mashaykh. But what they did, a lot of the Salafi Shabab there in, in Aden at that time, is that time it was a big fitna, you know, the, 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 they used to call it dish, meaning the uh, dish, meaning your satellite dishes, that that was new. And this was before internet, really, <laughs> prior, prior to pre-internet, pretty much. So the Shabab used to cut the wires of the, and I knew a lot of those Shabab. I knew some of them, especially those who were really vigilant. I knew them, and they would go around and cut the wires in people's cable uh, that they're built on their buildings. They would cut the, the, so their satellites wouldn't work. They'd get them installed, the company installs them, they cut them. And that was one of the things. And then they found out about bad houses that had either alcohol or that were prostitute venues. And they would go there and they would like shut them down. The problem with that is they didn't really have the qudra. Yes, they had the physical qudra. They cut those wires. But they did not have the authority of the hukam, of the government, the Muslim government. That is the Muslim government's authority. We're not going to get into too much more of that. That should be clear. But many people, of course, have doubts about this, especially Ahlul Takfir wa ghayrihim. And anyhow, another way of commanding the good and forbidding the evil, of course, is speaking about it. Sometimes you don't have the ability to speak about it. For example, you work at a job, everybody's saying Merry Christmas and stuff like this. You don't have the, I mean, you, as a Muslim, you say, you know, I don't celebrate Christmas or whatever. But you can't say, oh, you know, that shirk and, you know, and, and blast the people. No, you don't have the ability. You're going to get fired. You're going to be a source of fitna. And there is no great maslaha shara'in in that. There's no good benefit in you yelling at the people and doing it in a strong way. Uh, it's, you, you're going to lose your job. Maybe you need to pay. You have a family. So this is a harm for you and your family, if you understand the mas'ala. I'm trying to give you some uh, amthila, some examples. So it's very important to have wisdom. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, there's also... Uh, a famous uh, narration about uh, Sheikh al-Islam that when the Tartar, Tartars, that when they were uh, killing the Muslims, you know, the Mongols and stuff like this, and they, you know, they had such great strength, you know, the Muslims were weak and they just it were so weak that they literally would sometimes, you know, it might be a Mongol, he might show up without a weapon, the Muslims would wait, the men would wait till he came back with a sword and just be killed. They had so much fear of them. SubhanAllah, look at that. Wa'iyadhim billah. So, Shaykh al-Islam, uh, maybe it was with some students or something, and they said, Shaykh, you know, shouldn't you go tell this man he's drinking alcohol? And it was uh, one of the Mongols, I believe, or, or what have you, who was drinking uh, alcohol. He was drunk. And he said, N no. So he was looking at the Masadi and the Mufasid because he said, if we leave him be, Right now he's drunk, he's only harming himself. But if we disturb him, basically bust his alcohol or whatever, he will be back and they will slaughter us or it's something like this. This is a rough paraphrase of the paraphrase of the incident. This just shows you a This is a part of the a part of commanding the good and the forbidden the evil is knowing when it's the, the harms and the benefits and weighing the harms and the benefits. All of that comes from Fiqh Fiddin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with the class with the bat. And protect us from kulli su'a makruh. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.